Hey, Jason. I'm Steve. Here's my question. Um, so, I was just curious to know uh, what your take is on the massive um, smartphone penetration in emerging markets, especially Android devices. Um, how, how do you see this going forward and uh, what do you think are the opportunities that are untapped based on that? I'm asking that question primarily because when I'm having conversations with potential uh, investors as I'm building a company targeting uh, Africa and its diaspora, mainly uh, still think iOS first. And in most of these areas, Android is king or queen, should I say. So how do you see that dynamic moving forward? Thanks. Love the show. Okay, this is a great question. Here in San Francisco, in the Bay Area, we are iOS snobs. And for a good reason. All of the affluent customers use iPhones. It's the best phone, hands down. People agree on the high end of the market that they love iOS. So if you're building an app and you want to get the top of the market, the thinking today is go iOS. However, if you want to go for the masses, you want to go for the urban market, and you want to go for the international market, of course, the answer is Android. So there is an issue where a lot of VCs don't actually use Android phones, and they haven't used one for years. They don't know how good they've gotten. Lollipop, cake, M&Ms, whatever, ice cream, they come up with all these silly names of the, of the Android operating system, but it's getting better. It's getting slick. And so what I do is I have a Samsung phone, uh, and I always buy whatever the latest Edge is. I have the Edge with the curve, you know, Samsung Edge 6 or something like that. Amazing phone. I use it probably 40% of the time, and I use my iOS device 60% of the time because I want to stay on top of it. So if you're an entrepreneur, you should have both devices. And what I suggest is, you know, if you can't afford to have two data plans, you just retire your existing device and buy the other latest device every year. And if you're a technologist, spending $1,000 on a device a year is probably a good use of proceeds. Uh, a good use of your money. Or you can, if you can't afford it, you can just buy the, the latest generation one used. But you really should get your head around how awesome the Android operating system is now and how m massive the penetration of it is in other markets. What's particularly interesting about Africa and India and China and a lot of these markets is they're going to skip over, and we're talking about billions of people, are going to skip over using PCs. They may have used a PC but never owned one. Or they may have really never used one. So their first experience with email, their first experience with the web, and their only experience will be mobile. They might never own a home computer. What's really interesting about Android as well is how affordable it is. You know, we look at it and we say we have to have a retina screen, we have to have a huge screen, we have to have this, we have to have that. Well, if you're starting with nothing, an Android phone from three or four years ago is amazing. The fact that you have the web and you have Twitter and Facebook in your pocket, wow. And in fact, in a lot of these countries, they think that Facebook is the internet or WeChat or whatever it happens to be, Tencent to all these different messaging apps all around the world. People think that is the internet, the walled garden. So uh, for investors, savvy ones understand it. And I think you just lead with statistics. You just lead with statistics. Listen, you can make more money on iOS in the United States because the app store is more robust. Everybody has a credit card in there by default. But on a global basis, penetration is going to be Android, and you got to be there too. What I suggest for startups, of course, is to perfect yourself on one platform. So whichever is the dominant, dominant platform in your market, you want to start there. You want to rev your product, let's say, three times. So get to version 1.3 or 3.0, however you want to do it before you take on a second platform. Why? Well, if you have a leaky bucket, in other words, people download your app and nobody uses it, right? You paid for a download or you spent all this time acquiring a customer and then nobody winds up using it. Kind of sucks, doesn't it, to lose them? So fix the leaky bucket, make sure that people re-engage with the product and get value out of it. And then once it's perfected, then you can pixel for, by pixel, reimagine it, or just copy it over to the other platform, whether it's Android to iOS or iOS to Android. I hope that answers your question, and it's a great question. For more information about the Launch Mobile Wearables and IoT Conference, please visit launchmw.com. This is an event we're doing in partnership with our friends at Pivotal Labs, and it's occurring on October 15th and 16th this year, 2015, in San Francisco at Fort Mason. It's going to be an incredible event. We're going to discuss the fact that in 2005, almost nobody on the planet owned a smartphone, but, but today, 63% of Americans are using them for over three hours a day, which is a lot more than television, even. 
And by 2020, 80% of adults around the globe will have a smartphone. Yes, smartphones, mobile, it's all changing the history of humanity. Where we're going as a species is being changed by mobile phones, wearables, and IoT, even more than the internet and PC revolutions themselves. And we're going to talk about this with the top 2,000 executives in the mobile wearables and IoT event at launch mobile wearables and IoT. You can find out more information about the event taking place on October 15th and 16th here in San Francisco at launchmw.com.